Heartbreak. That's really all you can say about Arizona State's loss to number one SC last weekend. The Devils shocked the nation by jumping all over the Trojans early. But in the end, they let their biggest win in years slip away. Oregon has shown it too can play with the big boys. After a subpar season a year ago, these Ducks are back to their winning way. An absolutely glorious evening in the Valley of the Sun, Tempe, Arizona. Come on inside Sun Devil Stadium, where College Football Saturday is being presented by Keo Serra. Tonight, the Ducks of Oregon invade to take on the 20th team in the country, the Sun Devils of ASU. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Bill McDonald. This is John Jackson, and welcome to the fourth game of a great day of football here on FSN, and we think we've saved the best for last. And, J.J., I think this game is going to separate contender from pretender in the Pac-10 between these two. No question about it. This game is pivotal for both teams. Let's start with the Arizona State Sun Devils and their quarterback, Sam Keller. He has been phenomenal this year. He leads the nation in passing yards, and he's the main reason why this offense has taken off. But it's not because he doesn't have a great supporting cast. Derek Hagan has been spectacular. 21 receptions in the last two games against Oregon State and USC. He has been a killer for secondary to try to cover arguably the best receiver in the entire Pac-10. This is a great combination, probably the best one-two punch in the Pac-10. You know, around these parts, they're talking about a bounce-back weekend for the Devils because last week they came this close to the Trojans. We'll see how they respond against the Ducks. Now, for Oregon, they installed a new offense this year, but they are doing it with a veteran senior quarterback. The veteran quarterback is Kellen Clemens. The offense is the spread option, and that means that Clemens has to make a lot of big decisions. He has to make sure he gets the ball to a very talented receiving core, as well as use his legs to make plays as well. And oh, by the way, Billy Mack, what? how efficient has he been? <laughs> He's the most efficient quarterback in Oregon history. He's throwing for over 61%. That is big time. All right, ASU, they've owned the Ducks, won three in a row. We'll see if Oregon can come down in their house and turn it around. Take a break. When we come back, JJ and I will have the opening kick, the fourth game of the day on FSN. Oregon will kick. ASU will receive. And Matt Evanson will kick it off. He's one of three players that have kicked off this year. And it's interesting, in all the games that the Ducks have had, the guy that starts kicking off has never finished the game. So we'll see if he can keep the gig for the entire 60 minutes. And by the way, last week, if you saw SC and Arizona State, special teams were phenomenal for the Sun Devils. We'll see how they get out of the gate here tonight. Terry Richardson, who returned a punt for a touchdown last week, has it. He's kicking it to the outside and will give them great field position out at the 37-yard line. That is a 22-yard return. Two tight ends in the set. From the 43, Burgess. Does he have room? With pace, outside of the first down. Justin Finnessy finally rode him out, the senior corner. You know, it's funny, Billy Mack. We had we talked to both coaches. Both coaches have explosive offenses, but both neither one of them were satisfied with the running game. So we're seeing right here early in the first quarter that both teams trying to establish the line of scrimmage, trying to establish that running game. Well, ASU, you look at their numbers, you're thinking they run it 189 a game, but that was inflated. The games against Temple, Temple and Northwestern, they really ran up big yards against there. Of them, uh, Keegan Herring now in the backfield. Little play action and roll. Throw to the open man. Got it. Zach Miller, the truth. He's back. Played a little bit last week, but he's now 100%. And he's just one of the great tight ends in the Pac-10 conference. And when the offense is functioning this way and Sam Keller is able to spread the ball around to all of his skill positions, it's very difficult to stop this offense. We've seen Burgess touch it. We've seen him go to Derrick Hagan. Now they go to Zach Miller. A lot of talent on the skill position for Arizona State. They're also getting good blocking down the field. You talk about being one of the best receivers in the Pac-10, we well, have to do the little things, and that includes blocking. You see Derek Hagan getting after it down the field. And with Miller and Lewis, they got a couple of great tight ends. Herring is in the backfield again. That's Terry Richardson, the motion man, up the middle. Keegan Herring, that's good yardage on first down. To the 20 where J.D. Nelson comes up from the safety position, the leading tackler on the team. That's his 37th of the season. 
Well, Billy, the one thing I like about Herring and watching him play, now remember, he's only a freshman, and usually when you have young running backs as freshmen, they need things to develop, and they're not quite polished. Well, the best thing about Herring is he has great vision. See how he takes his time getting through the hole. He has that explosiveness, waits, lets the hole develop, explodes right through. Second down. 7.54 remaining in the quarter. Herring is the back. This is Richardson. 15-yard line, first down and out of bounds. Patrick Chung on the race to the corner. And he got Terry Richardson, the playmaker, who they really haven't thrown to a whole lot this year. He's only got nine receptions up to this point. Yeah, he's a he's a breakout player. He can make a lot of things happen. And, he, and Dirk Cutter in talking to him, he said they need to find some ways to get him the ball, to be a little bit more creative. You see the reverse there, but they also need to get the ball in his hands through the air as well. So you mentioned only nine receptions at this point, but they're well aware that they need to get Richardson more involved. Watch Hagen perhaps he's split wide to the near side. Richardson now in the slot position, and flags will fly. First down at the 15. Brandon Rod perhaps was the one who moved, number 62. Good ball, ball start. Number 62 offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That is Brandon Rod, the 6-4 sophomore. Red zone so important, third in the Pac-10 for the Devils. Yeah, both teams are very good in the red zone, but look at the opportunities. They have 24 opportunities that they've turned into 18 touchdowns. That's highly efficient. Not many field goals for the Arizona State Sun Devils, and that means because they're punching it in when they get the opportunity. They've been outstanding down here inside the 20. First and 15, right on the 20-yard line. Keller. Hagen. Brilliant. Touchdown. Twenty-one yards. ASU has the lead. They make it look so easy. A post route, a skinny post in man-to-man -man coverage, and you can't cover Derek Hagen one-on-one. -on -one. Much too good for that. Keller does a nice job recognizing the coverage, keeps max protection in, perfectly executed play. One of the least used, best kickers in the country. Jesse Ainsworth knocks it through. Derek Hagen, or J.J., a former receiver himself, thinks he is, well, arguably, the best in the Pac-10. Hagen for six. Starting a roar. Whitehead is behind with Clemens. Little fake inside. Over the middle. Picked. And out of bounds inside the 10. Jamar Williams with the interception and ASU in business. Now, Kelly Clemens typically makes very good decisions. Only one interception prior to this one on the year. But you can see good coverage in the secondary by Mike Davis. And that pass thrown short. It was tipped, but thrown short. Williams comes up with the interception. You see it deflected. Williams in perfect position in that curl area. That wasn't going to be incomplete either way it went. That was good coverage. Kelly steps up in trouble. Down he goes. Big hit back at the 17-yard line. Alodi Nata. Boy, is he a space eater. Big force in the middle. Not a great pass rusher, but he gets to the quarterback there. Well, that was one thing that was lacking from the Ducks early in the year was a pass rush. Now, they were without Devin Long, their best pass rusher for several weeks. He was the first one to get some pressure on Keller, force him to step up. And Nata, the big defensive tackle, able to get pushed up the middle to finish him off. Let's see if Nata now can block a kick. He's got six blocked in his career. Ainsworth, really good play, uh, place kicker. Spotted at the 24. Strong leg. He's got it. We got five and a half to play. First quarter. Cutter loves it. Why not? It's 10 0 Sun Devil. Two as Oregon looks to dent the lead. ASU, two straight drives with negative yards. So the Duck defense stepping up a bit. Ellen Clemens start this series from the 43. Dante Rosario is the man in motion. Inside, Whitehead 
spun oh, down the 37 yard line. London, near the Hogs. You know, I was here last week when Arizona State played the Trojans, and this place was deafening loud. Over 70,000 fans filled up Sun Devil Stadium, and it was extremely loud down on the field. It caused the Trojans all kinds of problems. So far, it doesn't appear that Oregon is having much problems hearing the signals. First down, Jeremiah Johnson is the back with Sario dancing in line. Whoa! Johnson and Clemens ran into each other, momentarily lost the football. <laughs> Quarterback to running back. Somebody's not on the same page. Now you know Oregon will rotate four running backs in the backfield, and this is one of the problems you have when you have so many running backs rotating with your quarterback. As often there's going to be miscommunication or guys take different angles. You can see Clemens and Johnson not on the same page, and Clemens lucky to get back on that one. They are taking, admittedly so, baby steps with this offense. Lot to soak in, lot to learn. Whitehead has 99 total yards, 20 more than the entire ASU team. He's got the football again. So he has been the workhorse. Over 100 total yards as he gets it down to the 25. Jamar Williams on the tackle. Let's go down to the sidelines and Lindsay. Billy, you're talking about the freshman having trouble holding on to the ball. Jonathan Stewart fumbled on the last drive. Coaches did not yell at him when he came off the field. Instead, running back coach Gary Campbell talked to him calmly. Kellen Clemens came over also in the two practice handoffs. Clemens keeping the freshman spirits up, gave him a high five before they came back out. Thank you, Lindsay. They're two out of three. Oregon on third down attempts. They are in another one here. Here comes the house. Everybody coming in. The receiver broke out. The ball went long, incomplete. Fourth down. And they have kicker issues, as we mentioned before. Demetrius Williams, the intended receiver. It would be about a 43-yard attempt. Matt Evanson again will come in. Remember, Martinez is the regular kicker, the junior, who twice has been packed in special teams player of the week, but he is hurt with that leg injury. And he's been spectacular on field goal, 15 of 19 on the season. One's already blocked tonight. Let's see if the Devils get back at it again. Evanson, plenty of distance. He's got it. Drove into that one. So the backup kicker has three. Oregon on the board. 10-3, Sun Devils. Reminiscent of the Bruins' comeback against Washington when they came back in the final minute for a winning touchdown. Here, it's back to Clemens. Looking long, down the field. Caught! Demetrius Williams. Inside the 10, first down, Oregon Ducks. And did Kellen Clemens show his arm strength on that throw? Blue flicker, the pitch back, plenty of time for Clemens, and he lets it loose. This ball must have traveled 70 yards in the air to Demetrius Williams. Nice job of concentration. You can see how wide open he is at that point. Help from the safety, Maurice London, but not in time. 63 yards, Demetrius Williams. Boy, he and Clemens have chemistry. They're kind of like great jazz artists sometimes, the way they improvise on the field. Terrence Whitehead in the backfield. Clemens on the option. Whitehead to pitch, looking for the call. Touchdown! Six yards on the option, and Oregon has battled back. Very nice call by Cro Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator. And Kellen Clemens recognizing there's one man to option off of the defensive end. Once he gets Whitehead on the corner, it's one-on-one -on -one in the end zone, and the receivers do a nice job of blocking. That's one key to this offense, this triple option attack. The receivers have to block well down the field. That was the key to that touchdown for Whitehead with good blocking down the field by the receiver. Extra point time. That one is bang through. When we return, we'll send you to our college football Saturday studio for another update with Mike Goldberg. You're not going to believe it. We'll see you in a minute. I haven't yet seen what DeMarco's wearing, but I know that suit is sweet. Burgess in the backfield. Second down. Backpedaling Keller. 
looking. End zone over the head of Miller. Of course, his brother Brent is also a tight end. He wears number 87. When Sam Keller first got to school, he was fifth on the depth chart. By the second week, he was second on the depth chart. He just was not swimming in his good cutter offense. He picked it up so quickly. They knew he would be special even when Andrew Walter was here. The limited playing time that Keller was able to gain in limited experience just helped that much more. He's picked up this offense as quick as any quarterback that Dirk Cutter has ever coached. Burgess backfield, third down. Over the middle, picked off! Blair Phillips, the middle linebacker, all oh, perfect position, and the threat thwarted. That's good play. Blair Phillips back in coverage. And the Devils come up empty. Now look at Phillips. He's in the middle of your screen right there. Now watch how he reads. The quarterback's eyes gets up. Another nice one-handed catch by Phillips and able to take it back. Terrence Whitehead is the back. See what Oregon can do with 37 seconds. Whether they'll put it in the air, they'll run option. By the way, that touchdown to Whitehead earlier was ruled a forward pass. So it's a touchdown pass from Clements to Whitehead for their touchdown earlier in the game. For those of you scoring at home. Seven, second and three from the 39. So you can add another touchdown pass to uh, Clements. Total. He's now got 13 on the year. Kellen Clements sixth in the nation in total offense and now has thrown a touchdown in each of his last 10 games. So his streak continues. Remember the Oregon receiving core. All the receivers go 6'2 and taller to see if he throws it down the field. Okay. A little one-on-one -on -one and incomplete. Boy, they got Colvin one-on-one -on -one along the sideline, try to dump it into him. It'll be third down. 27 seconds remaining in the half. Take a look at the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Mike Davis. Now Colvin is 6'2. Davis also tall. You can see Davis, that's a defensive back technique. You see how he sort of grabbed the inside arm subtly. That's when the defensive backs get away with all the time. It drives us X receivers crazy. A lot of things drive you X receivers <laughs> crazy. It's always pass interference. Yeah. Man. Third down. Clemens got a man. Rosario, 47 yard line. You know, coming into the game, Rosario had 10 catches. Seven of the 10 were for first downs. He got another one right there. That's what Dante Rosario Time out does. Oregon. They're first of the half. He's your go-to guy when you need to move the chains. And he's a great option, especially in short yardage. You expect that with all the receivers that Oregon has, you have to pay a lot of attention to Williams, Colvin, even James Finley. You know, your Tim Days, your Dante Rosario, those are the guys that are going to guarantee to have one-on-one -on -one coverage. Good job by Clemens taking advantage of that. Rosario, one of those guys that you talk about touches, just getting the more touches because he's, he's a nice athletic body that you can get the ball to, and that's what Mike Bellotti wants to try to do. So 22 seconds remaining here in the first half. Of U.S. Marines from Pac-10 standings. Bruins rolling, Trojans rolling, Bears going down. More from the fellas at half on that one. And then Oregon and Arizona State, and both these teams well, the jury is out, I think, on Oregon, how good they really are. This would be a great statement game for them. And Arizona State figures, hey, we played with LSU, we played with USC. We're pretty good. They got to show it here tonight. Well, no question, at the end of the season, both of these teams will look back at this game as either very good or very bad. It's going to turn the momentum for either team that wins for their season going forward. If Arizona State loses, I mean, this is a good team that all of a sudden becomes average at 3-3 three and three if they don't win tonight. Yeah, and Oregon, if they can win tonight, they are at home next week against a weak Washington team that has struggled, of course. And it's a bye week for the Devils before they get a game at Stanford on the 22nd. And remember, Oregon's Arizona State schedule, although it is difficult at the beginning, a lot of games at home, they have to make sure they defend their home turf. First down. inside Sun Devil territory, and they still have 17 seconds remaining. This throw is what makes Kellen Clemens so special. Able to drop back, recognize the blitz in his face, 
really throw off of his back foot and deliver a strike. They're going deep on the depth chart with Paysinger making that catch, but it just shows you the depth of this Oregon receiving core. So Paysinger close to a first down, but not quite their second down, just trying to get into field goal range here with 17 seconds remaining in the half. Clemens, quick drop, throws, wanted Williams to read the football and come back and get it as he had to throw it a little quicker than he wanted to due to pressure. It's going to be incomplete. Sun Devils rolling the dice. That's a read play between Williams and Clemens. Clemens recognizes it's one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. A lot of times you see in the pros especially, they throw that fade stop. Receiver runs the fade, the quarterback intentionally throws it behind him since the rec receiver can recognize the throw, he stops and makes the play. Miscommunication on that one. 50% tonight on third down. They'll have to run the option to try to get it all. I'll tell you what, Whitehead is going to be short. He stumbled and will be short. He Time out, Oregon. They're was headed a for a first down. He would have gotten the first down, but he tripped up short, fourth down, and with seven seconds left, They'll take a shot at the end zone here. The trio waiting to give it to you. Fourth down and one. Rosario in motion. Could be last play of the half. Whitehead has a first down. But Clemens was there looking for a pitch. Clemens now wants a timeout and going to get it with two seconds left. But Clemens was available for a pitch. Timeout. But instead, Whitehead Oregon. goes down, gets the final first down. Out of the half. Third and final timeout, as you heard, for Oregon. And they'll have an opportunity for a long field goal attempt. Evanson from 51 to end the half. And a possible lead. Is it going to creep over? Yes, it does. Well, th those are bonus points. End of the half. After holding ASU at midfield and forcing the punt, they get three. It's set up with that fourth and one conversion by Whitehead, and how about the leg? Good from 51. It would have made it from 56, 57. And now it's into a slight win, and you can see the celebration. And remember, he's kicking because Martinez isn't healthy. And 13 straight points. And Lindsey. Thanks, guys. So, Coach, big field goal to grab the momentum going into half. Aside from the early turnovers, I'd imagine you're pretty happy. I'm happy because we've played really well on offense and really well on defense. It probably shouldn't be quite as close a game, but we made some mistakes, hurt ourselves, got the turnovers. Uh, I probably shouldn't have tried a 55-yard field to start with, but I wanted to give the young man confidence kicking in his first game, and maybe it helped with this at that 40-whatever-yard it was. Yeah, so send him out there for a 55-yarder. That's a good way to build some confidence. Terrence Whitehead, this is what he looks like when he's healthy. A big difference. Amazing difference. Yeah, he, he's been hobbled the last two weeks, and it's nice to get him on track. He's playing very, very well, and again, he's a great receiver, and in this offense, he can be a multi-purpose guy out of the backfield. Which thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Billy, back to you. And very confident, Coach Pilati. All right, I've been teasing him up. Now let's take you to the studio for the college football Saturday halftime report. Our final game of the day comes from the Pac-10. We are live at ASU, and right now the Ducks have that late field goal on top by three. JJ, what an interesting first half. I'll tell you what, ASU got off to a blazing start, but just like that, Oregon turned it around, and that's why Mike Bellotti figured, hey, we should be up even more at the end of that first 30 minutes. Well, the difference has been the control of the line of scrimmage by the Ducks, both offensively and defensively. They've been able to get a consistent running game going, but on the defensive side, they've been able to shut down Arizona State's run game, and that's really been the difference in this game. Use your football acumen. Take us inside the Honda halftime stats. Well, if you look at the stats, you have to point right to the rushing yards for Oregon and the lack of rushing yards for Arizona State. You can see Oregon has 97 yards on the ground as opposed to Arizona State's 30 yards on the ground. That leaves a 277 total yards for Oregon. They're controlling the line of scrimmage, Billy Mack. That is really the difference in this game is how well they have been able to control the line of scrimmage and the game. Second half, Arizona State will kick it off to the Ducks of Oregon. Oregon's low loss, of course, to the Trojans of USC at home at Austin Stadium. ASU has lost a couple of times, both two top five teams, LSU and SC, as Ainsworth, per usual, drives in in the end zone, unreturnable, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. So the 
shootout has not turned out to be that. It's been a great defensive effort for uh, both these teams here tonight. Arizona State unable to get a run game going, and that has been a bugaboo for a, a few of their games, and they knew they would have to establish it. Galeotti likes to uh, put guys in the box. And ASU, when they get their hands on the football, we'll see if they can change their plan a little bit. Right now, Kellen Clemens in Oregon step out of the field first and 10. Clemens, great fake, and here he goes to the 40, 45, out to midfield. Boy, everybody bit on Whitehead, and Clemens just took off and galloped out to midfield. Davis finally racked him up. Well, you can imagine in Arizona State's locker room, the speech was, we have to stop the running game with Whitehead and the rest of the running backs for the Ducks. In the first play, they come out, use Whitehead as a decoy. Clemens goes on a naked boot by himself for a huge run, and that's where this triple option attack is so dangerous. You can fake it to the running back, get the defense to flow, and let the quarterback hurt you with his leg. Clemens, second leading rusher on this team. And driving Whitehead. I, I can't even tell you if you haven't seen Oregon what a different runner he is now that he is healthy. Downstairs to Lindsey Soto. You know, Billy Dirk Cutter's club has never trailed at the half this year. When reminded of that at halftime, he said, maybe that's a good thing. We've given away two this season where we have led at the break. So maybe this change of pace will be a good thing. He also reminded me they were a good second half come from behind team last year. He said he told the guys at halftime, you have to come out full speed in this second half. You can not stay back on your heels. He thinks they got up 10 nothing and thought that this was going to be easier than it was. Obviously, it's not the case, so he gave them a good talking to at halftime, and hopefully they'll come out with a little bit more fire in the second half. Good stuff, Lindsay. Uh, Cat knees, uh, the stop on Whitehead, so they're just attacking the gut of that defensive line. Well, the offensive line for Oregon is extremely big. We've talked about it. That five, four out of the five guys are over 300 pounds, so if they can get some push up front and start working downhill with some zone blocking plays. There's a lot of success to be had against a smaller but quicker ASU defense. All starts with Lucas, the center, pitch it, and that time, great play. Maurice London was right there on the edge. Here are your first half possessions. Didn't start well, did it, for the Ducks? Blocked field goal, interception, fumble, and that's when Arizona State was rolling. The momentum clearly on their side, but the Ducks able to regroup, put together a field goal, touchdown. Now they had six plays and a punt, but that last field goal was really a big momentum swing going into the locker room. They had to be very upbeat and very promising and confident on what they were able to achieve with that last score at the end of the half. On second down and long. Clemens, who threw a pick earlier, he had only thrown one all year, has been very efficient, finds James Finley. Well, here's a guy they've waited two years for, signed out of high school, went to a JC, very emotional, big play type player, and they are thrilled to have him in the lineup. One of the top receivers on the West Coast. You see Finley's gonna be in the slot here. Now it's a receiver screen, but watch the blocking down the field. You see Dave the tight end. They're able to get up on the receivers. That's Colvin blocking down the field. The receivers for Oregon do an outstanding job of blocking in space. You have to be able to block in this offense because it's a spread option attack. The receivers so important in that option game to block. They did a nice job on that quick screen. That's an absolutely great point, and it goes underlooked so often. Power sweep this time to the near side on the pitch. Jeremiah Johnson trying to toe the line and will go out of bounds, marked at the 22 yard line. Now, the difference with the backs is Johnson is that speed back for the Oregon Ducks, able to get outside. They like to get him out on the edge to stretch the defense east and west. Difficult for the offensive linemen to get on their guys, though, because remember, this is a big offensive line. Not as mobile as most offensive lines you see around the country. Very big. They work better going downhill. They've done their homework. Devils, second worst rushing defense in the Pac-10. Coming in. Johnson again, the lone setback. Penalty right in the middle. You would suspect on ASU. You know, this Oregon team trying to get back to that elite status. They were there for so many Dead years. Ball offside. Defense number one. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's Jordan Hill, the junior tackle who jumped. You know, a week ago, Matt Leiter had some success in drawing the defensive front of Arizona State offside by fluctuations in the snap count. Kelly Clemens did that right there. Just a little hut hut. 
gets the defensive line opting to jump into the neutral zone. Well, here is where the game was lost last year for Oregon against ASU in the red zone. They could not convert inside the 20 last season. Terrence Whitehead is in the backfield. They're one out of two in the red zone. A touchdown. Tonight, this is going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Great pursuit. So you're playing into the strength of the Arizona State defense whenever you go sideline to sideline. It's a quick defense, and they're small. Now look, you see Koki right here. He's going to be the defensive end on the side. They're going to run the option to his side and option off to him. But you see Clemens didn't put enough pressure downhill to force him to commit. He was able to play both Clemens and the pitch man. When you run the option as a quarterback, you have to force the defensive end to commit one way or another. Clemens did not do that. And that's an outstanding play. Now Clemens, four out of nine on third down, has Jonathan Stewart behind him. He's a pretty good receiver, too. Could be an excellent target. They haven't looked for the tight ends much. Instead, they'll go inside for Stewart. Nowhere. Dale Robinson and company. There he is. Dale has eight tackles for loss. Leads the conference coming in. Bam! Right up the line. Well, Robinson. Great at play recognition. That time they moved Robinson to the defensive end spot. It's thinking that Oregon was going to go to the pass. He was going to put some pressure on Clemens. Inside stunt. He stunt right into the play. Was in perfect position to make that play. That's a playmaker on defense in Robinson. Now, by the way, because he was the second string kicker, didn't expect to see him. This is Matt Evenson, not Evanson. We'll admit it. We asked at the half. So for his fan club family, all Oregon fans, Evenson has got it again. Eugene loves him. They're going to know his name. 16 to 10. Ducks. And this does not look like the in sync Arizona State offense that has race the field all year long. Well, this is the danger when you have an offense that is not clicking on all cylinders. As a quarterback, you tend to want to go to your go-to guy to sort of get you out of trouble. But of course, defensively, Nick Aliotti, his game plan has been flawless to this point. In terms of blocked! Kick is blocked! And it's loose inside the five. McDonald's kick was blocked, and it's going to be recovered. At the two-yard line, Dutch special teams rise to the occasion. McDonald, his second kick this year that has been blocked. And the pressure is going to... Reed was there. Going to come know. right down the middle. The freshman from That's Mission Viejo, Nick Reed, did a nice job coming down the middle. Look at him. He doesn't quit. Escapes the up man with a nice swim move and makes that big block. Nick Reed on that Mission Viejo team in high school that was one of the best in the country. He was obviously one of the best defensive ends in the country on that team. Comes up with a huge special team for us. JJ and I operate out of Southern California. Mission Viejo is in South Orange County and uh, one of the top high school programs in the country, if not the best right now. Nick, a defensive end, pure, fr uh, pure freshman. There's inside handoff to Terrence Whitehead, a true freshman. He's in for a touchdown. Late signal from the linesman far side, but uh, touchdown Oregon. So they turn the block kick into six, and this game is getting away from the Sun Devils. Good surge up front, big offensive line, and Whitehead, nice job, nifty running by the senior, able to weave his way into the end zone. Special teams, that's been a key for Arizona State going into this game. JJ, you don't agree with this, and we'll talk about it after this, but they're going for two. You figure they should kick for one. One and six ought to be playing. Checking at the line. Option play. Inside shuttle pass. They've got it. So for two, James Finley has the deuce. 20 more 10. on FSN. It's our Keo Sara College Football Saturday. I'm Bill McDonald along with John Jackson and Lindsey Soto. Well, they were calling it a bounce back weekend for Arizona State. So far, it's a letdown and a meltdown for the Sun Devils as the Ducks have dominated them. Richardson, 30-yard line. 
Here's the two-point conversion. Now tell me why you don't go for two to get it to points just too early in the game. And I'm always a believer that, you know, you're scoring a lot of points. You're going to have more opportunity to score. I don't risk the points here. Now, it works. So the two-point conversion opens up to a 14-point lead. But if you don't make it, you put Arizona State right back in good position. There's plenty more opportunities throughout this game if you're Oregon to figure to go for two points if you need it. I just don't agree with taking the chance early. It obviously pays off. But usually in these situations, I like to see the team just get the points on the board and worry about two points later when you actually need them. Senior quarterbacks have historically, of course, been brilliant in the Pac-10, and that Clemens a great game here, directing this new offense to the near side, incomplete intended for the lunging Matt Miller. You know, Billy Mack, one of the stories was how is ASU going to respond after that emotional game that they played a week ago? I can tell you from playing at this level, that when you have big games like that and you go through all the blood, sweat, and tears trying to win it, you come up short, it's hard to get that, that motor up and running. Now, although it's a week in between games, it's still difficult for a football player to get up and be ready to play for the next week. This letdown is not a surprise. I'll tell you what Dick Cutter said in a minute. Over the middle, caught, should be a first down, Zach Miller. He was trying to get his team, of course, back to business as usual and get their focus attention uh, uh, and attention on this game. And, you know, he said, he said this week, he said, you know, if you look back and you think about what could have been, you're going to lead a miserable life. You have to look what's ahead of you, stay positive, and that's what he was trying to preach to his kids this week. That's often difficult being a player, you know, being 18 to 21 years old, you're playing in a big game, you have the national champions on the road, and, it, and when you lose that game, it's still tough. It's just difficult to be in that situation. They were banged up quite obviously. Oh, yeah, it opened caught and yardage. Jamal Lewis. Deep in the duck territory. Here come the Sun Devils right back. Patrick Cohn, last line of defense. First down at the 14 after a 43 yard pass and catch and run. See, after that catch, Lewis just screaming, let's go, let's go, trying to breathe some fire into this offense. All kinds of time for Keller to throw that time. A nice window to throw in, and he's right on the mark to Lewis. Lewis has become a very reliable target for Keller this year with the injury to Zach Miller. Big target is Lewis, 6'4", 221 pounds. Richardson, the motion man on first down. Sam Keller looking, throwing, caught. Terry Richardson, he beat Jackie Bates. That's close to a first down. And Keller all of a sudden got a little jump to his step. He seems a little more determined. He's going to have a quick to get together with his coach. It's all starting with the protection up front. Keller, a nice clean look on an out route to Richardson. Richardson able to separate himself from the defender. And that's the key with Keller. If you give him time to throw, he'll kill you. You know, new quarterback. We saw the old one with Lindsey and Andrew Walter. New quarterback, but he's got half a dozen experienced receivers coming back to help him along, quite obviously. And that, really, that helps as a quarterback because you have some familiarity in the receiving core. They know where they're supposed to be. They get in the areas they can uncover and make big plays for you. So as a quarterback, you have that comfort zone that you know where the receivers are going to be. You just drop back, go through your progression of reads, and deliver the football. First and goal, Arizona State just inside the five. Rudy Burgess is the back. Rudy Burgess gets the call. Rudy Burgess up and over and down at the one yard line. Maybe the two. Six and a half, clocks moving, third quarter. ASU, as they normally do, started quickly. You know, they came in outscoring opponents 35 to 7. They went on top in the first quarter. They went on top 10 0. Since then, 24 unanswered by Mike Bellotti's team. Good surge up front for the offensive line, going over Grayling Love and Steven Bird. Not a bad place to go over Grayling Love. That would be right up the middle. Rolling, Keller, wide open, touchdown! Zach Miller, the truth! Last year's Pac-10 freshman of the year. He grabs it for six. If there's a time to run this bootleg, it is second and short. You know that Oregon's going to pack the defense in. Keller, nice job of ball faking. Easy toss and throw. Sun Devils answer immediately. Jesse Ainsworth. 
Try to make it a seven point game. Well, you know, at the beginning, we promised points, and I think we're going to get them here in the second half. I just got that feeling. Could be end to end. It all starts with the play fake from Keller. Wide open, the easiest throw he's had to make tonight. And second a big down, sophomore. Second down and short. An obvious run down, so if you're going to run that play action fake, that is the down to run it. He's raised on a ranch in eastern Oregon. Now here in the desert in Tempe, trying to orchestrate a big victory. Ten point underdogs coming in. By the way, in the red zone tonight, two for three, touchdown and a field goal. The points that they've gotten inside the 20. This has been the Achilles heel for Oregon. They've been very effective in the red zone in terms of scoring. But not a lot of touchdowns. Too many field goals. Coach Bloddy, Coach Curtin said this is a problem they have to fix. They've worked on the red zone. We'll see if it pays dividends. There's a fake inside. Quickly back. Clements chased by three Devils and throws it away. Throws it right at the feet of Todd Tim Day. Excuse me, Tim Day. Never an opportunity. Remember, this is a new offense for Kelly Clements. Being a senior quarterback, he's made the adjustment very nicely to the new offensive schemes and the philosophy that Coach Croton has brought to this team. It's a combination of a lot of different offenses. We've talked about it, a little Utah, Northwestern, Bowling Green, Texas Tech, Oregon, all mixed into one. But then it's funny, it's the smash mouth football that has been a real presence also. Third down at the 15. Trying to run for the first down. Going to have to kick it into another gear. Dives for the first down. Has it with the spot inside the 10. Great effort. Terrence Whitehead, the senior. The returning 1,000-yard rusher. He's done it a couple times. Unbalanced line to the right and a simple toss to Whitehead. He lose the one-on-one -on -one tackle by Maurice Golden. The second effort, you know he knew exactly where the first down marker was, and he lunged to get across. You know, this is a game that everybody knew Whitehead had in him. He came in averaging just 44 yards a, a game and, and three yards a carry. Jonathan Stewart now. Jonathan Stewart up the middle. Stood up. Thrown down. Gain of a couple. You mentioned the ineffectiveness of Terrence Whitehead to this point in the season, largely due to the amount of injuries that he's incurred in the season. Of course, dating back to last year, he had some troubles with the groin earlier. The hamstring has bothered him. And so with that, he's gained a couple extra pounds as well. They listed at 225. Well, the coaches tell us he's down to about 215. That's a great playing weight for Terrence Whitehead. That's when he's most effective and most elusive. You can see how, how much better he looks tonight as compared to any other time this season. On the other side now, this nicked up defensive Arizona State trying to hold Oregon to just three. Clemens can run for it if he wants to. And he is nailed right at the one yard line. Boy, he hesitated just a half a beat, and that caused him not to get in. And Clemens is really hurt. And so is Robinson. That was a major league collision. And and with two big-time players. And wow. Kelly Clements has the mentality of a linebacker, and that's what often can get you in trouble as a quarterback. Watch, he's going to try to surge across, and a huge hit by Josh Golden. He actually... He was Golden, yeah, who delivered the major. I think he got part of his teammate, too. He right. did. He might have gotten Robinson even more. He knocked the helmet off of Dale Robinson. But then they've got all those option plays that they can work to. You going up the middle or you going outside here? I think you go right at him. Okay. Yeah. May soon it's Schwartz, 340, 360 on that left side. And you got Whitehead behind. Up the middle. Down. Mike Talbot was in the backfield as the handoff was taking place. Now you've got a fourth down and you've got more than a yard. You got about two yards. And I think that's too much. Unblocked. A missed to Simon. You see Rosario trying to come over late. Yeah. Calvin able to shoot the gap, get on Whitehead, 
as soon as the handoff exchange was made. You, you kicked a field goal here. You, you had two scores. Granted, you got 16 and a half minutes remaining in the football game. See Bill Miller, defensive coordinator. A lot of years of experience. And Mark Carrier, the cornerback coach right next to him. There's Mark. You played with him. Yeah, my ex-teammate at the University of Southern California. Coaching the cornerbacks here. You know, they've been really pleased with the job that Mark Carrier has done, bringing guys in and changing up some of the defensive looks that Arizona State offers these days. A lot different than a year ago, even. Tough DMC. loss. Yeah, you know, it was a tough loss for him personally last week. He really wanted that one. You know, that's what he did as a player, too. You see, he sort of chew on the gum and tell everybody else what to do. <laughs> you know, it, it didn't even appear to, as though there was a decision to be made. I think you were correct. I, I think Oregon was thinking four down territory from the get go. There was not even any kind of a promotion or a discussion. It was just the player we call Fourth down. Key. You know, Lewis has come off the center number 55. Jeff Kendall has now come in, the freshman at the center position. So watch the center quarterback exchange. At, at one of the key moments of the football game. The simplest and the start of every play. Not really the simplest, but the start of every play. Fourth down. Clemens with Whitehead behind him. He will throw across his body. No, sir. They shove the three. They come up empty. Arizona State football. A pivotal point in this game. The defense for Arizona State playing pass. Good coverage. Clemens trying to throw back across his body. He saw the, the window further back to the left than Day recognized. Let me tell you something. You know when you listen to this stat that Arizona State has what it takes on defense. You know, they, they had SC, they forced SC to punt seven times last week. Previous to that, SC had only punted four times all year. So when you could do that to what some people are calling the greatest offense in football history in the collegiate ranks, you know you have what it takes. Long throw, knockdown. Intended again for Terry Richardson. Boy, it's been Richardson the main target tonight, not Hagan. Well, there's a lot of attention being paid to Derek Hagan. Sam Keller, Dirk Cutter, attempting to make the adjustment and get other players involved. How about the defensive play? It's a nice job coming over. J.D. Nelson. Well timed. Leads the team in tackles with 36 coming into tonight. Had a career day against the Trojans. 13 tackles in that game. Nice job in the secondary in coverage. Keller with Burgess. Fakes it to Rudy. Steps up. Throws. It's going to be third down and long. That time Hagen again. Remember I, I mentioned earlier about Jerry Rice. Nobody's going to outwork Derek Hagen. Just smart, precise routes, and you know, he can outmuscle guys with that size. And you have to Coach Cutter now faces another third. You have to appreciate guys like Derek Hagen. Look around the Pac-10. You got Haas, who's having a great year, an unsung guy, walk on at one point. Derek Hagan, not that most highly recruited guy coming out of high school, but they've worked themselves to be the best in the Pac-10. Third down, stepping up, throwing. There's the man, Hagan, and he's getting himself fired up. Past another J.J., John Jefferson, all sorts of records here at Arizona State. Has a catch in 35 straight games, and that's a big one. Nice job of pushing by Hagan. Good presence on the sideline. See Keller, he's going to stick with his money receiver all the way. Delivers a strike. Beats Jackie Bates. Sophomore corner. Half a minute remaining, third quarter. Should be a great fourth. Get comfortable, stick around. College football Saturday coming to a close here in the Pac-10. Keller dumps it out to the near side. Burgess close to a first down. He can run, he can catch. In fact, they mention the word Reggie Bush when they talk about Burgess. Not as dangerous, but they can move him around and do the same kind of things. That's what they're going to want to do with him as this year progresses. Well, he's, he's really effective as a receiver out of the backfield. We talked about it a little bit earlier that he was a receiver converted back to tailback because of the need for Arizona State at the running back position. And with the development of Keegan Herring, 
I wouldn't be surprised to see Burgess move back to receiver next year with the departure of Derek Hagan. Keller steps up, hit! The ball's loose. It's picked up by an offensive lineman. Is that Steven Berg? We'll see where the uh, fumble picked out. It is Berg. This is the 6'6 junior, 300 pound tack, uh, guard. Sun Devils very fortunate to get this one back. The ball just ends up in the hands of Berg and a lineman's dream to have a chance to carry the football. Once again, pressure on Keller. That's Anthony Trucks who forced the, the dislodging of the football, and that'll do it for the third period. Boy, the intensity level picked up in this third quarter. And we got 15 minutes of football remaining. We're live in Tempe, Arizona. Somebody's trying to go two and one in the Pac-10. Ducks or Devils? Oregon with a touchdown lead. Back in a minute. Fantasy. They're playing like All-Americans tonight. Remember, McDonald's had one blocked. Two now on the season. Takes a while to get rid of it. And a low delivery. Finnessy, fair catch, 12-yard line. And a little fourth-quarter action for you right here on FSN. Ducks have it. See if he can do it on this drive. He's in the backfield, and he has the football. And he's got yardage. And he's going to have more yardage. He's well over 200 for the game. Total yards. And he's out across the 40 to the 45. 36 yards. Hello, Terrence Whitehead. The old Terrence Whitehead is back. Over 1,100 yards a year ago, and it was in this type of variety. He was a slashing type of runner who gets into the secondary, makes quick moves. Good speed, not great, but more known for his shiftiness, able to slip tackles, and he plays bigger than he actually is. We talked about that he's 215 pounds, 5'10", but he plays much bigger, a good runner in between the tackles. Kellen Clemens is the quarterback. He's gonna get the trick play back to him, under pressure, throws and completes it. Get a safety valve pass over the middle as he Rolled out. By the way, just to go back to Whitehead, and, and when we say that he's back, well, we'll get it after the replay. He was involved in this one. Well, if this would have worked for a second time, I would have known that something is up. They Remember, they tried that in the first quarter. It worked for a big play to Demetrius Williams. Ryan Keeling, the reception. By the way, Whitehead, he is back. He only had 177 yards into the game. Russia, he's got 126 tonight. Remember, he didn't play last week. Clemens, option, pitches it out of bounds. That was Jonathan Stewart in the backfield, missing the connection. Or was that the pitch man? I think Stewart might have been up in the middle. Might have been Finley, the pitch man. The bells tolling in the background. They do it in the Coliseum for USC. They do it here, too, on third down. Get the defense and the fans all geeked up. This is a big third down. You can feel the electricity in the crowd. It's going to have to come from the defense. They're going to have to be the ones to get this team back in it. Big third down play here. Stewart in the background. In the backfield, here comes the blitz. Here's the throw, caught, hammered out of bounds. Is number 19, and that's Pacinger. We saw him earlier, Brian Pacinger, the sophomore. He's a pretty big target too, JJ. 6'2 and over 200 pounds. Nice job by Pacinger, making the catch. He's gonna take a big hit and able to hold on to it. More importantly, gets his feet in bounds. We'll see if it's enough for the first down. They're gonna mark him short. Fourth down. Bilotti with confidence. Says, let's give it a go. Remember, in the third quarter, Arizona State, the Devils, a huge goal line stand. Can they do it again? Jonathan Stewart, big back in the backfield. He gets the call. He's got the first down and more. Breaks it into the secondary. Rides a player down to the 32-yard line. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is confidence from an offense right around midfield. You're going for it from the 44-yard line. Jonathan Stewart, they move the chains to the Ducks. I love the confidence. I love the call by Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator for the Ducks. He goes over that right side, over 700 pounds of beef over there. They do a nice job of getting some push. Give it to the power back in Stewart. I like that. You know, you have to play to win, not play to hold on. Sun Devils, 19 weeks in a row in the top 25. They last had a run like this in 86, 87. That could be in jeopardy. Stewart can't find anything. Here's another good stat about the consistency of Dirk Cutter's team, or at least their ability to bounce back after a loss. You know, the Sun Devils have not lost back-to-back -back games since late 2003. They go down, they normally step right back up. They're back. down by seven here in the fourth. Well, in this case, they play two very difficult teams back-to-back. -back. Of course, the Trojans, they rank number one in the entire country. And then Oregon, a hungry team, who's also ranked in the top 25. So a difficult back-to-back, home-and-home series for the Arizona State Sunday. Yeah, it depends on which polls you're looking at. Clemens over the middle. Demetrius Williams. That is magic for Oregon. 24 yards and a score. 34. Let's give an extra 10. 34 in the score. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Williams does a nice job getting inside on the fade route and beats one-on-one -on -one coverage. You know, as a receiver, when you are one-on-one, -on -one, you have that choice. You don't always have to go outside on your fade routes. You just have to beat the defender. If you get inside, it opens up an easy passing lane for the quarterback, which is exactly what Williams did on that last play. Kick is good. He beat Keno Walter White. Demetrius Williams, he's on pace to become the all-time and single-season receiver in Oregon history. He'll just take the six tonight in the desert. Keller going to give it to Burgess. I'll tell you what, wrapping up quickly, Oregon. They're not allowing much after catches, are they? Anthony Trucks again. That Sam Backer, the senior, 6'1", 226. He's got speed. Second down. Quickly snap. Keller again over the middle. A little extra yardage that time for Jamal Lewis. And they'll bring it right up to the line. Still 220 remaining as the clock stops as they move the chains. You know, it's, it, it, it's the little thing. Remember, I was shaking my head that they snapped that punt with about 10 seconds. We'll see if that comes back and haunts them a little bit. They have time management on both ends here. First down. Keller looking down the field this time, going for Hagen, and just misses it. And his pass is complete. Seven in. Well, you can hear the coach on the near side. Yeah. Don't let them run by you. That's yeah. all they don't want. Rule of thumb, don't get beat deep. Jackie Bates in coverage actually mistimed his jump and gave Derek Hagan a chance to get to it. Look at how early he jumps. Hagan had the ball just hit right off of his hands. Difficult catch. But Jackie Bates, rule of thumb at this point, you cannot let any receiver get deeper than you. There's no excuse for that. You have to make sure you re remain disciplined. Bates, one of the fastest players, if not the fastest player on this team. A DB's nightmare when it goes right over your head. Keller over the middle. Incomplete. Trying to find the streaking Moe Mutz. How about our Cooper Tires defensive player of the game? And he had the job of trying to shadow Hagen. A big task to try to contain Derek Hagen. They knew they weren't going to be able to to stop Hagen, but they had to contain him. Justin Finnessy has been up to the task. They've done exactly that. They haven't stopped him, but they've contained him. Third down. And 10 at the 38-yard line. The junior, Sam Keller, steps up in the pocket, throws to the far side of the field, incomplete. Once again, final gasp 
a fourth down coming up for Arizona State with just a minute 52 remaining. Billy, you know, I've had a chance to watch Sam Keller over the last year, and you know, even though he's a freshman here at Arizona State, you know, these last two games, it just seems like he's a little bit off. Really, the second half of the USC game, and also tonight, doesn't really have it all, but he's taken a lot of hits over the last two weeks. You know, he's a gamer, tough guy, linebacker type mentality, but he's taken a lot of hits. I wonder just how much that's affected him. Fourth down. They need to get to the 28. Is Burgess going to get there? No, he's not. The Oregon Ducks have held, and the Oregon Ducks are going to end this three-game losing streak at the hand of the Sun Devils, and they're going to move to 5-1 and 2-1 and two and one in the conference with a huge road win in Tempe. Keo Serra, play of the game. Just a little option. That's going to go down as a forward pass to Whitehead, too. Whitehead giving his body up for that touchdown, as he has done all night. How happy is Mike Pilotti? He knows how big this game is for his Oregon Duck team. He goes against his old offensive coordinator, Mike Pilotti, 13th coach, to achieve 50 conference wins in the Pac-10. Jonathan Stewart up the middle. By the way, many thanks to all who worked on the telecast. I mean everyone. On the truck, on the field, the audio, video, everyone helping us up out here, all headed out by our producer, Kyle Reichland. So thanks to all for your help, and hopefully you enjoyed it wherever you may be. They're Time fleeing out. into the night Arizona here State. in Tempe. Number two of the half. And remember, UCLA will be at Pullman. You can catch that coast to coast on FSN around the country. You if you there? haven't caught them, you can uh, see what the Bruins are doing. No, I won't be there. I think that's going to be our friends Barry and Petros. Oh, okay. That's it. Mike Bellotti in Oregon. They moved to five and one, two and one in the conference. Coach Cutter in Arizona State now three and three. <laughs> Final thought quickly, JJ. Well, Mike Bellotti had, couldn't be pleased, more pleased. Dirt Cutter, big task in front of him, trying to pick this team up off the ground. Big doubleheader next week on FSN. Make sure to join us. That's going to do it for Tempe, Arizona. Final score, 31-17. For John Jackson and Lindsey Soto, I'm Bill McDonald saying so long, everyone. Thanks for watching. Exclusive coverage of Pac-10 football right here on FSN.